We all live with hazards every day. And as a team, we work hard to try and prevent them. And we all take sensible precautions every day to reduce our exposure to hazards. We know it's important. It's about caring for ourselves and our colleagues, as well as our loved ones at home. Thinking about the hazards that might be around us is a very human thing to do. It's that sense of caution that makes us look for hazards, work out how to prevent them, and best of all, remove them altogether. You can use something called the hierarchy of control to help you do just that. It helps you to think about the choices you can make to deal with all kinds of hazards in a step-by-step -step way. And the best thing is, it's simple to use. It has five levels. At the top is the most effective way of reducing risk, removing the hazard completely. Let's look at two jobs people regularly have to do. Replacing a lamppost light bulb and inspecting a storage tank. You start by working out what hazards there are in the task you're about to do. And the first question is, can they be removed? Changing a lamppost light bulb means working at height. Inspecting a tank means entering a confined space which may contain a hazardous atmosphere. Can we eliminate either risk completely? When possible, go back to basics and think about the way things are designed and built. Can you design the system or organize the job so that people are protected from the hazard? This lamppost was redesigned so the bulb could be changed by someone standing on the ground. And using a safe robot means no one has to enter the tank to inspect it. A great way to completely remove exposure to a hazard. Can you think differently about how to deal with hazards and lower risk? Can you think of new ways to do jobs or design systems so that people can be protected from hazards? Most days, nothing bad happens. The way we've always done things works just fine. Each uneventful day that passes reinforces a steadily growing sense of confidence that everything is all right. And we believe that I, we, my team, must be okay. Because the way we did things today hasn't led to an incident. In part one, we heard about how we face hazards every day. And the safest thing we can do is eliminate them. The trouble is, we get used to living with them. It's called risk normalization. That's when we take a hazard for granted, because so far, it's not caused us any harm. And we all do it. Whatever field we work in, it is wired into the human brain. And the longer we go on without an incident, the less likely we are to remember that the hazard is, well, a hazard at all. It's just become part of our normal working day. We don't see it anymore. So we don't do anything about trying to eliminate it. And then suddenly, disaster strikes, seemingly out of nowhere. No hazard should ever become normal. But of course, it's not always possible to remove them all, which means we will often face a dilemma. The job has to be done, but we don't think that the hazard can be removed. So, what's the right thing to do in those circumstances? First, it is important to simply recognize it and accept that you have a dilemma. It may not be easy to solve it, but you should not ignore it. Share the problem, get ideas from your team and other people and escalate it if you need to. Often, a fresh perspective helps, so share your dilemmas and get help from anyone who can contribute. It's important to remember that we all judge risk based on what's happened, or hasn't happened, in the past. But that's not a guide to what may happen later today, or tomorrow. And we all have to be on the lookout for new hazards. Research shows that we pay more attention to risks related to large, rare events than the small, common ones. So we worry about those big events more. 
even though they're unlikely to ever affect us. And we pay less attention to the risks that we may take all the time. The hazards we think are normal, the ones we've got used to, they can strike at any time with severe effects on us, our colleagues, and all that we hold dear. We can't live in a world in which nothing bad happens. Each time we choose to accept and manage a risk, we do it believing that we know enough about it to control it. We trust that our people and our processes will be able to manage it. But thinking that you have full control is an illusion. That's why recognizing hazards and eliminating them rather than managing them is so important. It is also often a more effective and efficient way to do the job. But what happens when you find a hazard that can't be removed? That's when you go down through the other layers of the hierarchy of control. Substitution, engineering controls, administrative controls, and finally, the use of personal protective equipment. If you can't remove the hazard, can you lower the risk by substitution? Replace solvent-based paints, which can be hazardous to the environment and people's health, with ones that are water-based. Another example is to substitute the hazard of traveling by road with traveling by train instead. The next level down is engineering controls. If substitution is impossible, can you make sure that people are physically separated from the hazard and kept out of harm's way? The next step down is administrative controls. These are the rules and procedures and the training and information that makes people both aware of the hazards and how to avoid them. And finally, at the lowest level is PPE. It is still vitally important, but it is the least effective way of protecting people from hazards. The hierarchy of control prompts you to ask questions at every stage of your work whether you're in an office or out in the field. And it should be applied right at the start of the design and planning stages of a job. Many incidents in our industry happen when some part of a job or the conditions change over time. Or because some other activity has affected your work in an unexpected way. So a decision taken in the past to manage a risk will leave us exposed to these unknown future events. Remember, you are never completely in control. The unexpected is always possible. And as time passes, it may even become more likely. That's why caring for each other is so important. It's an antidote for risk normalization and helps us with raising and solving dilemmas. If you see risks being normalized, speak up. The other person might not see the risk anymore. Talk about your dilemmas and be interested in the dilemmas others face. Could you help resolve them? And ask yourself, is there a different way to do the job? Is it possible to eliminate a hazard by doing the work differently? Wherever you're working and whatever you're doing, show you care about the well-being of yourselves, your colleagues, and your loved ones.